In this video, we are going to learn why selection pane is the most useful thing in PowerPoint. We are going to cover a lot of topics related to selection pane, but first, let's see how to enable it. You can click on any shape or text, go to the formatting tools, and enable selection pane. It will open a separate pane on the right side. You are going to use it very often, so I strongly suggest right click on it and say add to quick access toolbar. I have already added it to my quick access toolbar. That's why this is inactive. Here is my selection pane. If you have a blank slide, then how do you enable selection pane? Go to the home tab. Under editing, you will see select and then selection pane. Let's look at an example. You can download this file and follow along. That way you will learn much faster. This slide has three shapes and the same three shapes are shown here. There's a list. The shape on top is the one which is in front. What does that mean? If I overlap this shape, this is in front of the other two. Same way the oval is above the triangle. So if I overlap, triangle goes behind. Now I have overlapped all of them. Just by looking at the slide, you can't even say how many objects are there. But the selection pane will always show the entire list. List of all the items on the slide. Right now, all these three objects have the same color. I want to change the color of the triangle and oval. How would I go about doing it? Well, some people will move it like this so that I can reach that triangle. Yes, I can change its color now that I can see it. But afterwards, I'll have to rearrange it the way I want. That's extra effort. Another option is to say send to back. Still not done. One more send to back. And now you can select the triangle. Now, when you apply color to it, this is in the wrong order. You will have to do a couple of more send to backs, which means a lot of extra manual work. And this struggle we have to do just with three objects. Imagine more complex slide, how cumbersome this is going to be. That's why selection pane is great. I don't even have to bring it to front. Right now, confidently, when I click on the oval, I know that the circle is selected. Even without looking at it, I can change its color and it will have taken effect. Just to prove that it happened, I'm going to move. What is the best practice? Whenever you're working on PowerPoint, keep selection pane on. Let's take another example. I have the list of three objects. What I want is the rectangle should become a background. That means I want to send to back. Instead of using send to back, you can simply drag it down. And when I'm selecting things, I don't want to select this by mistake. So, I can lock it. The moment I lock it, notice the selection handles will go away. This is now locked. I can't select it. So now, if I select something, there is no chance that I will select it by mistake. In fact, if I say Control A or select all, it will select all, but this one is locked. So now if I move, only these two objects are moving. If I just want to focus on the shapes and want to temporarily disable that background, I can even hide it. I can hide any object by clicking on this icon. Remember, when you have finished making the slide and if this object remains hidden and then you run the presentation, that object will still be hidden. So after you finish working on the slide, remember to show all. That's another best practice. Let's look at another example. I have eight icons and I want to treat them as groups. So I'm going to select this set of four icons and group it. Control G is the shortcut or right click group. Now look at the selection pane. The group is shown as a hierarchy here. And if it's getting too crowded, I can even collapse it so that I can work at group level rather than individual item level. Suppose I want to change one of them. I can click from here and select much more easily. Now I'm going to create two groups here. One group, second group, and then both these groups I'm grouping. Now I have a third group. So look at the hierarchy. This is the entire group, and this is group one, group two. So even if your slides become more complicated, selection pane makes it easier to handle them with confidence. Now let's look at a more complicated slide. I'm going to run the slide to show you what it does. I'm trying to show what is analytics. Learn 
useful things from the past and then use that knowledge to try and improve the future. How many useful things would you like to learn? It's the same as asking how many reports are you making? Four reports, 12 reports? Actually, that's the problem. Who told you there isn't an equally useful 13, 14, 15 thing in the data? So we shouldn't stop. We should ideally want to learn all possible useful things. That's what I mean by analytics. Now, if you look at the selection pane, notice what it has. I'm going to hide all and deconstruct the slide. First, it is a blurred picture of the light. Then we have the actual light. Then we have title. We have a text placeholder, which has all these written in one text box. Then we have a separate text box, which talks about how many. And we have another one, which talks about 4, 12 few. So all of these are being coordinated using animation. So I'm going to go to animation, animation pane. This is difficult to coordinate and perfect the animation. And in this process, selection pane will help you. For example, so suppose I want to work on this 4, 12 few. So what am I going to do? Hide all. Just go enable that text box. Work on it without disturbing any other object. When I'm done, I'm going to show all. Let's look at another example. I have multiple stars on the slide. I have already applied appear animation for all of them. So when I run this slide, it's showing like this. I want this star to come first, then this, then this, then this, then this. This is going to require a lot of trial and error from here. You can see the number of click which affects this. So this is click number five. So I will have to drag drop this. Like that, it becomes a lot of guesswork. Now look at the names of these objects. These names are given automatically. But I want this to be step one. So you can rename it. Click on it. It will allow you to edit. So I am calling it step one. Then I want this to be step two and so on. Now what is the benefit of giving these names? When I go to the animation pane, those names are the ones which are being used. So now I can reorder them in a much more easier and confident manner with zero trial and error. And then they will behave exactly the way I want it. Now let's talk about morph. On this slide, I have one shape. I want the shape to move, rotate, change its color. So I'm going to duplicate the slide. In the second slide, I'm going to make changes to this shape. And on the second slide, I'll go to transitions and apply morph. When I run the slide, all the intermediate steps are automatically done by morph. It's a great feature. Let's take another example. I have the same shape, but in the second slide, I'm going to delete this shape and put a star there. Now, if I apply morph, it's not going to work. When morph shows something like fade, that means morph has not understood that it has to convert this object into this object. And that is where selection pane comes into picture. What we have to do is go to the slide, go to selection pane, this is called rectangle 3. Whereas on this slide, it's called star point 1. So what I have to do is give both of them a same name. But before that, I have to put double exclamation mark and then whatever name you want, demo. Copy this, go to the second slide, rename it with exactly the same name. And now let's see what Mauve does. And that's a brilliant use for selection pane. Selection pane also works in Word. So in this Word document, I have a picture and a text box. If I go to selection pane, same thing, you'll see that picture and text box are available here. And you can say show all or hide all. Even in Excel, charts and pictures are shown in selection pane. One word of caution, hidden objects are dangerous. It is a slide with three objects, but actually selection pane is showing a fourth object. If I unhide it, someone has written something like, now if this PPT goes to your customer and some smart person there unhides it, you are in big trouble. In general, hidden objects which are hanging around for no reason should be removed before you finalize and share the document with others. In a complicated presentation, there can be many hidden objects. So how are you going to remove them in one stroke? You go to File, Info, Check for Issues, Inspect Document. 
you'll have to save the document first. It's going to check for all these things and we are interested in invisible on slide content. You can also use it to remove all presentation notes in one go. Click on inspect and it will find all the invisible objects and in one click we can get rid of them. So make sure you run document inspector before finalizing any document. It's available for Word, Excel and PowerPoint. So in summary, selection pane is really useful. Always keep it on at least in PowerPoint. Imagine selection pane is there since 2010, but hardly anybody uses it by default. Millions of people need it and you can help teach them. How? By like, share, subscribe, comment, ask questions. That way YouTube knows this video is useful and it's going to help both of us make the world a more efficient place. So that's it for now. Thank you.